Hey, Christina Simmons from Say Yes to Holiness here. So this week, we're kind of moving into the third step, and we're actually moving through all of them. But we're going to focus on the third step, which is to strive to grow daily in virtue. And one of the things that we had talked about in one of our Zoom calls was about how is it that we can go about knowing God's will and decision making? You might be going, well, isn't discernment um, a part of abandoning ourselves to God's will? In some ways, yes, but I think it really applies here in our understanding about how it is that we can go about growing in virtue. And again, discernment is about coming to an awareness, growing in understanding, and then taking action. And what's very important for us to always remember is that imperfect action is perfect for us in that moment. And I know that seems kind of confusing, but the reality is, is that we're never going to be able to take perfect action. And why aren't we gonna be able to take perfect action? Well, because we're not perfect. So part of what we're trying to do is go ahead and take whatever is the best action, our next best step in that moment. So how we do that most frequently is in our attempts to grow in virtue, step three. So that's a part of why I wanted to focus on it. And I also wanted to focus upon it because we are celebrating the feast of the baptism of our Lord and actually we're celebrating our own baptismal identity, our own identity as beloved sons and daughters of God. And this is so important for us to remember because it is from our baptismal identity that we then have the model, the epitome of what it is and who it is more accurately who we're supposed to be. And we're supposed to be little Christ. We're supposed to be just like our big brother, Jesus. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do. And as we are striving to be who we are called to be, which is to be saints, to become perfect, the way that we most act, you know, most uh, normally will take a step, you know, towards that is in our striving to grow in virtue each day. So again, I always tell people, you know, step three is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, this is where, uh, particularly with our daily resolution, um, a striving uh, to, uh, um, to be open to how God is asking of us to grow today. Um, and so uh, it's all a part of this. And what's important, again, is to keep in mind the fact that um, our daily growth in virtue is our ability to recognize and see that God is working in and through and with everything that's in our lives. All the people, all the events, all the things that are going on, and they're all designed to help us become more like Him. So what I'm hoping that as we're coming out of the Christmas season in which we rejoice at the great gift of who Jesus is to us, of the Father's extravagant and lavish love that he has you know, bestowed upon us by sharing himself in the form of the second person of the Trinity with us, you know, who came down to become like us so that we could then encounter him and to be with him. And as we begin ordinary time, that what happens is, is that we're then able to find the extraordinary in the ordinary. And that's what seeing God all around us is about. And when we continue to grow in virtue, then what happens is, is that we become more and more aware and we come to a deeper understanding of how it is that we need to uh, go about uh, striving for virtue, the different virtues in our lives, according to our own weaknesses and our own, you know, pre predominant sins that we, uh, that we struggle with, those root sins, and our particular virtues that are going to help us become little Christ. So, as I said before, most times people will um, associate 
you know, uh, making a decision only with like the big decisions. You're at a crossroads and, you know, you have to uh, make a, a personal, big personal or big professional decision. And that's usually when um, people will kind of think about, okay, well, what's God calling me to do? Well, God is calling you each and every day to become like him. And that's why, you know, that's the call to holiness. And it's in that particular state of life and our own personal mission that he has given us in the midst of doing exactly that. Um, and I just want to pause a moment because so often we'll think that our um, God has a predetermined blueprint about what our lives supposed to be, you know, and that our job is to figure out what it's supposed to be. And then we hope to get it right or at a minimum just buckle down and be obedient to it. And that it has nothing to do with how God's will works um, because it doesn't respect our freedom. And that's the most important thing that God has given us. He's given us the freedom to choose. Uh, a quote that I've used several times uh, is from Viktor Frankl in which he tells us everything in this life can be taken away from us except our freedom to choose how to respond. And so the idea that God doesn't give us a choice um, and that we're fated to do you know, X, Y, or Z it is totally against who God is as a good and loving Father. So um, one of the big things is, is that God has revealed His will for us. Um, it's revealed in Scripture. And the biggest thing is that He needs little Christ. He needs more people like himself and he has this longing and this hope and this desire for us to be transformed and he gives us a way to go about doing it i just synthesize it into the four steps to holiness but the church has been telling us forever you know it's in christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for and from the very beginning god has his eyes on us he is looking at us and he has designs for our glorious living, that life of purpose and peace and abundance that I always talk about. And the whole overall purpose that he's working out everything with everyone in order to bring that about in our lives. So uh, one of the things that we have to do is that we have to be willing to say, all right, Lord, you know, what is it and how is it that you're speaking to me today? And that's why we have to begin with prayer. And how is it that you want for me to respond? Help me freely choose the good the, of what it is that you desire for me. That's what we're trying to do. So we go about that uh, with you know, using a daily resolution. Um, if, and, uh, and then we also uh, learn from the saints uh, with spiritual reading. And we'll get more into that of how that can all work um, you know, next week. We'll talk more about it, but all of this comes together with our past and present circumstances. What are our obligations? What are our commitments? What are our responsibilities? Our gifts, our talents, our motivations, our passions. All of this gets wrapped up and God has a beautiful plan for us. Um, and so what we need to be about is learning more and more how it is that he is calling us to become a little Christ, to become a little brother or sister to our big brother, Jesus. Um, and so uh, many times, uh, you know, my, uh, my thoughts for you guys this week are um, to go a little bit deeper uh, using, uh, we'll kind of, uh, you know, reuse this and uh, we'll also focus our Zoom calls a little bit more on it. Um, but, you know, coming to an awareness of some of the things that you haven't noticed before. So uh, I'll be sending you guys the weekly review notes. Um, and, you know, what are your questions so far um, about the things that we've been discussing? Um, giving you a little bit of extra time also to be able to move through those uh, exercises in regards to identifying your predominant sin. Uh, but then also, I want you to really focus upon where have you felt God's presence in your life, in your experiences of daily life this week? The more that we grow in awareness of where God is moving, which he's moving in everything, but the more that we become aware of it, then we open ourselves up to 
being able to respond in union with what is his will for us and his will for us is what is best for us it's not about again it's not about us buckling down and, and doing what God wants but rather it's about us coming to an understanding of how much we are loved and how much God desires to f- overflow and just you know lavish his love upon us and he does that by giving us an opportunity to choose the good and the true and the beautiful and that is what growing in virtue is about to choose the good the true and the beautiful with promptly easily and with joy and the only way we get there is by practice the only way we get there is by practice the only way that you can master anything is by doing the reps you know to use an athletic term So if we're not practicing how to be patient or we're not in circumstances where we have to be patient and being patient and learning how to be patient, we don't grow in patience. Um, I I can attest to this. My patience, for example, with my mom, you know, is extraordinarily greater. I'm not saying I'm anywhere near close where I need to be, but the fact is, is that I can see my growth and it's because I was asking our Lord to help me grow in this area and I was trying to be in union with his will for me which is in this instance I believe for me to have a loving and beautiful sharing relationship with my mother to be able to care for her for me to be able to be a sign of his love for her especially of his mercy for her especially in the wake of her strokes in which she's not able to care for you know particular things in her life anymore and she needs help but for me to be a sign of that love and that care that he has for her but i have to be patient in order to do it i have to set aside my pride in order to do it i have to set aside my desire to control and to not get angry when i'm not in control All of these are ways that I have grown in virtue, but I'm nowhere near mastering them yet, but I've practiced them and I'm a lot better. So that's what we have to set out to do. So I hope that this has helped you a little bit and gets a little bit more clarity upon how it is that we are to be using step three, growing daily in virtue in order for us to continue on the spiritual life is for us to be able to practice so that eventually we can hopefully become masters of ourselves of our minds and our hearts you know um, and uh, our in our bodies so that that way we're able to be in union with god's will for us and so we can truly embrace all of what he desires for us so this week I really want you to focus upon uh, using the weekly review notes. Um, And I've come to an awareness of some things I had not noticed before. So have you discovered your root sin? Um, Have you uh, discovered, you know, like I did, you know, kind of in doing this exercise and preparing for this video, you know, that, hey, I've grown in patience because of this situation with my mom. Um, So to be looking for how God is working, you know, do you still have questions about things? Um, you, you have questions about, you know, how is everybody else, you know, handling, you know, uh, their root sin? What are some suggestions that you would like? Um, and then also to be truly searching for where you felt God's presence in your life this week. Where is it that you're experiencing him in the events and the people um, in all, all the experiences around you? Um, I heard a beautiful, um, you know, thing, which was we cannot truly embrace and appreciate God's creation unless we can embrace and appreciate our own selves that we understand how much God delights in us and on this feast of the baptism of our Lord we need to know that just as God said when Jesus was baptized this is my son in whom I am well pleased God delights in us in the same way and we need to allow ourselves to be delighted in um, and to respond to that by loving 
as we can by striving to become like him in all things. Thanks, and I will be reaching out to all of you through an individual email this week. Um, I'm going to send it probably tomorrow, um, and because I want to connect with everybody to make sure that we're getting on track for what's coming in this next quarter, where are you going to focus, um, what is it that God is revealing to you for where it is that he's asking of you to grow as we're getting ready and leading up to Lent, but we're not quite there yet. We've got six weeks. Uh, five weeks before we begin Lent. So we have five weeks of ordinary time to be able to embrace all of what it is that is extraordinary in our ordinary lives. God bless.